Welcome to Tuesday Endgame class. Now, uh, we're going to talk about your favorite tournament because you know it exists. The European Club Cup, which coincidentally is in a place in Greece that I was at two or three years ago for the World Youth. Where was I in Greece? Do you remember? What? That's Georgia. Oh, that's Georgia. Yeah. I can't remember that. Sorry, Porto Caras. Oh, no. Yeah, Kaldiki. Yeah, and they're playing there now in the European Club Cup. Now, this tournament doesn't make any sense, so I like it. It's just teams. It could be like U5. Wow. And then you have to qualify because your team is good. The teams don't have anything to do with each other. They're just, okay, you're a team. Now, they play throughout the year in their, in their various countries. So, Magnus Carlsen's playing. This is the last time he's playing before the World Championship. Okay, you guys at home are lucky. You know the results of the World Championship, and we don't. Okay. And uh, only like two of you got that. That's terrible. Josh is like, I don't get it. I get it. Okay. Anyway, uh, like Carlson's on board one on his team. Makes sense. Then other people, like they're in all different countries. You never heard of them. So anyway, his team won a big upset today. They beat a higher ranked team. Um, now, if Carlson lost today, which he did not, although he was black against Mamajarov, mm -hmm. then Car Caruana would have been number one in the world. If Carlson loses tomorrow, then Caruana will be number one in the world. And he's playing Ding Lirin. Now, he's white against Ding Lirin, so he's not going to lose. Now, as you all know, Ding Lirin is the biggest streak ever of not losing. He's played about a year and a half and hasn't lost about 83 games against 26, 27, 28 hundreds, like you guys would do, <laughs> except the opposite. Okay, so what I did was I took four end games that were played in the last three days from this tournament. This tournament's slightly more than half over. And, you know, like that. Now, the first game Carlson played was against Vladimir Potkin, your favorite player. And he's a Russian player who used to be about 2680. Also used to be. Now he's not 2680. Man, the truth hurts. Okay, But Potkin's a good player. He just, his rating went down. Okay, and he's black against Magnus, and Magnus played the move Rick B1. Okay. Now, in this position, it's clear to even the most dim-witted individual with an advanced degree in hyperbolic topology that this is equal. Everything's equal. Okay, you could argue black's better, you'd be wrong, because white has two isolated pawns and black has no isolated pawns. Although the isolated pawn doesn't really hurt white because he's got a nice rook there. Imagine this pawn was here. Ugh, horrible. Okay, and if I turn the engine on, which I won't do because I'm too lazy, it says all zeros equal. And Magnus is famous for winning equal positions, especially when his opponent's 240 points lower rated. That doesn't hurt. Okay, now here, Black made a very bad move recommended by Ginger GM. H4? Close. I said Black made a very bad move. H5, H5 right. Somebody knows who Ginger GM is in the group. Right. right, H5. Okay, this is a mistake. Now, in this position, let's pretend we're good players. Now, that's some pretending for this group. They're like, I can't do that. Okay. What's White's next move going to be? And the answer is, White's going to try to win down the B file, because that's the only way he can win. Okay. White's next move is A5. Then when White plays A5, White's winning down the B file. I got rook B5. I got rook B6. My queen's coming to the B file. And your B7 pawn is backward and weak. Therefore, the correct move is... B6. B6, right, and the computer says equal. H5 is a mistake, and after A5, white is slightly better. Also, what, what the heck is H5? What's that got to do with anything? All right. All right, that's like what I would play in a one-minute game. Like, I'm kidding. All right, H4, putting it in H, rook B6, and white is very slightly better here because white's got pressure on the B7 pawn. Dang. Okay, and then Magnus is like, can I have that pawn? Now, this is vastly different than a couple of moves ago when white could never win anything. Now white's almost certainly going to win the B-pawn. If I win the B-pawn, my A-pawn's pretty good. Now, what's the purpose of H5 and H4? In a perfect world, it's to checkmate white. Black's not going to checkmate white. This is an endgame lecture. So, I mean, if Potkin realized, oh yeah, Ben Feingold's lecture is endgame lecture, not great players of the past then he wouldn't have played h5, h4. See, that's why his rating went down. Mm. Terrible. Okay, so he played knight d3. 
the queen moved away from the knight, knight b4, blocking the connection between the queen and the rook. Queen e4, he's got another way to take on b7. And all this time, black had the option, the ridiculous option, of playing rook to b8. First of all, you shouldn't play rook to b8 because it's rook to b8. Like, that's, you know, we shouldn't put your rook there. That's the worst. But even if it was good, in these positions where the knight was, was way over here doing a good job, like that a6 was good because the pawn's pinned. Now maybe he could play rook b8 because after a6 I could take with the knight. However, remember when black played h5, h4? Now that pawn's not too well defended. Also, this pawn's not defended. So what's funny is if my student played h5, h4, I'd be like, what are you doing? You're trying to lose your h-pawn and being successful at it. This guy's a lot better than me, and he still moves his pawn to its doom. It's doom! Doom! What show? Control. Very good. Finally, somebody who gets everything. Okay, doomed. Okay, so he played queen d4 because that defends this pawn on h4 because I said so. And then rook takes b7 is risky because the queen is hanging on e4. And if you trade queens and black takes with the pawn, that pawn attacks the knight on e3, so we can't take on b7. So yeah, Potkin's not as bad as he plays. Okay, he took, took with the pawn, then, and he took the knight. Now when we trade knights, um, we don't have time to take on the pawn here because then black's going to win. e2 or rook check and take. So he has to take this. Now white's a pawn ahead, and white has a terrible pawn structure. Unfortunately, if I take this pawn, did I say if? Then I got two passed pawns. That's, that's too many, okay? And he checked the king up, which is, you should never do that, okay? And now Carlson's like, I, I want two passed pawns. So he defended his A pawn. If he takes this and loses this, he only has one passed pawn. Although, probably winning in my opinion but okay two pass pawns is better okay now i've been telling my students this for years one day one of them will listen to me no i'm just kidding that never will okay you should move your king up in the end game carlson's one of my best students so he moves his king up every move and pockin's like i'll move my rook every move that's a good idea not a good idea okay g6 still not moving his king up c5 finally moves his king up and carlson moves his king up carlson's like i have a good plan and then i make two queens okay and pockin says i can make queens too everybody's making queens okay so everybody's making queens that's fair right i mean it looks like white's making queens first okay so you have to play rook c2 king d3 King D2, he's like, get your rook away from my pawn. Pockin's like, no. Now, what was the point of that? Thanks for asking. In this position, when black's queening his pawn, white can play rook B1 and stop it from queening, right? Okay, and this pawn's queening with check, so now it's not queening with check. And now the rook can't defend the back rank, so now Magnus's rook can go to the back rank. So Magnus did really well there to get his king off of E4, so that this was never check. So if the guy doesn't queen with check, that helps. And Magnus has two pawns. Okay. Now what move for white is the simplest way to win? Rook b1. Rook b1. Because if I queen and you don't queen, then I win. Right? So rook b1, and that's it. Finally, Pockin equalized material, then resigned. But he equalized material. Okay. Man, that was a lot of past pawns white had. Now, Magnus wins a lot of games like that, where the computer says it's equal, and then 10 moves later it says he's better, and then 10 moves later he's winning. And they're like, wow, he wins all these equal end games. Now, he doesn't do that as much as he used to, but Potkin's rating went down a lot in the last five years, so now we see why. And if you want to be a good chess player, you have to play well in all phases of the game, not just get a drawn end game and lose it. I could make this lecture about me because my opponents are rated 800 points less than me usually and they lose all the drawn end games. But it's nicer when it's grandmasters losing drawing games, we make fun of them. Yeah. I could lose a drawing in the Magnus, I just can't get a drawn end game. Okay, so Magnus was very efficient. He, he, he somehow, from the starting position, got his pawns there. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. It does. And then, then, then they're there. Yeah.
So that's pretty impressive. And we can only assume Magnus may have won this with black too, but he was white. The computer says it's equal, so maybe he would outplay his opponent, win this position. Okay, next, this game was played on the 13th, this is three days ago. Uh, wait, what am I doing? I need an adult. Okay, the next game is two of your favorite players, David Navarra and Niels Grandelius. Niels Grandelius, there's nothing to sneeze at, 26.55. Okay, what's he known for? I'll accept two answers. His name being funny. No, I would have accepted Bug House, and I would have accepted, he had this huge ponytail for everybody, he got rid of it. Okay, so in this position, black played a move most of you would play. Or a tasty two. Yeah, and now we get this ending, which might be winning and might be drawing. Okay, and again, you got to move your king up. Okay, so white moved his king up. All right. And he attacked the pawn, and he saw it. And the computer wants black to move the king up without touching these pawns, but he touched the pawns. And the problem is, from black's point of view, well, actually, we can vote. It's the first time you can vote. You can vote League of Legends, you can vote Fortnite, or you can vote Nintendo 64, oh, okay, or you can vote Pat Buchanan. They're all good things to vote for. All right, so if you had your druthers, Archer says that a lot, and you could take pawns off the board or leave them on, which side wants to take pawns off the board? White. Let's vote, who says white? Trade all the pawns. I say Fortnite. For it. Who says black wants to trade all the pawns? Okay, so it was one to zero with four abstentions. The abstentions have it. Okay, right, and the one person who answered for real was correct. If this was rook versus bishop and there were no pawns on the board, that would be a draw. Okay, and white has more pawns than black. When there's no pawns on the board, black can't win. When there's pawns on the board, black can win. Now, one thing that I tell my students is that rooks are better than bishops. However, that's usually in the end game. In the opening and middle game, rooks are rarely better than bishops. So in the opening, your rook is in the corner and doesn't move. How's that better than a bishop? In the middle game, the guy checkmates you with his two bishops while his rook does nothing. However, in the end game, the rooks and bishops are free and the rook is more free because the rook can go to every square and the bishop is limited to half the board. Right, Armin? Yes, sir. Okay. So black is better because we have an end game, but black has a rook and white has a bishop. Exactly. Okay. So white's like, let me trade some pawns off. And in this position, black has an interesting decision. The computer doesn't necessarily agree with the decision, but says it's okay. Um, I probably would have done what black did, even though I know what the computer says. You can play g5 or you can tank. Computer slightly prefers taking, but the human plays g5. Um, usually humans don't like that kind of pawn structure. And if black is going to win, he might need a pawn that's not a, not a side pawn. So. Okay, so g5, they move their kings up like they're supposed to. Now, one reason the super grandmasters play the end game better than other players is they know when they can move around and not do very much, but not affect anything. Sometimes if you don't do very much, your opponent starts doing very much. And then you're like, I didn't do anything and he did a lot. Here, white can't do a lot. And black can't do a lot, so they just move around. See how much fun they're having? Moving around is fun. Okay, and eventually black trades and I've said it once, I'll say it again this lecture, I'll say it to my next student, I'll say it on my deathbed. You have to move your king up in the end game. So black went here, and when white said that's illegal, black said I have to move my king up in the end game. So white then played king g5. Wait, that's not what happened. Okay. So black moved his king up in the end game, even though it's not possible. He still did it. He's moving his king up. Okay, and at some point, this pawn's not going to be easy to defend, and he'll get mated. And he's moving his king up, and white moved his king up. Okay, and if white plays king takes pawn, he should draw easily. 
So White was thinking, ha ha, you moved your king up too much. Now your king can't defend your g-pawn. How did Black defend his h-pawn? Or g-pawn, whichever one. Rook d4. Yeah, in fact, it's not threatened. Because as you were thinking rook f6, and you were thinking, Ar I mean, rook d6 check. Mm -hmm. Nobody got my Arby's reference. So in this position, we're not threatening to take this because of the misplaced white bishop. Well, you can't play rook f6 now, so he did play rook to d4, so he could play rook to d6 check. Now, of course, we still could take the pawn and try to win the rook for their past pawn. Then you're going to lose. For example, and you're like, I'm going to win. Look at me. Okay, and obviously, the black king is much better than the white king in this position. So, something like this could happen. Okay, it could happen. Or, or no, it couldn't happen. I don't know. I give up. There we go. All right. And then, white, white is too slow. And if I turn the engine on and announce his mate, probably 15. All right. Yeah, I was, uh, I, I'm so wrong. No, I would see 15 by now. All right, that's one move on. Okay, the truth hurts. All right, so he can't play king takes h6, so he didn't. And once again, black moves his king over there to get the h pawn. Okay, and in this position, bishop e, it's a blunder, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, when well, I say it's a blunder, like this pawn's hanging, so you have to, you're going to lose one of your pawns. So, black has two plans. One is to take one of the pawns by attacking them both, and the other is to take white's bishop and then win a pawn and win the end game. The only way to save both pawns is to play bishop e8, and then I can, I have more than one way to win, but just checking and taking the bishop wins. Okay, and then he resigned. The only variation of note would be seeing who, who's the quickest, okay? And unfortunately, both players are able to calculate this. And if White's King was on B8, this would be a draw, but White's King isn't on B8. Mm. So White plays King C7, and the easiest win is this. But then you guys can win. Yeah, they can. Maybe. Yeah, they can still win. Yeah. Okay, so the Rook was better than the Bishop. The Bishop was just defending. The rook can defend and attack. Mm. The bishop's still like, I'm defending all these pawns. Yeah. So Navarro lost to Grandelius. I can't believe it. Navarro's really good. Yeah. You remember from a couple of years ago when Navarro tricked Kasparov in the Blitz tournament in St. Louis. I'm sure you remember that. I remember nothing. Okay, this game was played today between uh, Votacic and Efimenko. Radoslav Votacic, as you all know, um, coached which player in, in world championship play? He was one of their coaches. Magnus. Close. Sergey. Close. Keep naming world champions. You Anand. There you go. Yeah. He worked with, and then his rating went way up when he was working with Anand. Okay. Now in this position, White played the obvious move. Yeah, take the queen. Okay. Now, here white has an extra pawn because six is more than five. Although, you may be worried the bishop on a5 is trapped. On the other hand, on the queen side, on the a, b, and c files, white has three pawns to one. In the end game, this is very important. And this game was played about six hours ago. Okay. And here, black made a bad move, and he's probably losing here. But he was especially losing after his next move. It was the same bad move played in our first game by Potkin. Let's see if you guys have a good memory. I know Archer remembers. H5. Yeah, he played H5. Okay, now here's why Votacic is better than you. Oh, wait, that would take up several hours. I'll just give you one reason. Okay, most of the people in this class, this would be their analysis. Knight E3, that loses a pawn. Knight h2, that doesn't lose a pawn. So they play knight h2. That's the analysis. Good analysis. That was all correct, too. Okay, the knight's terrible on h2. The bishop is fantastic on d4. 
if one could magically take these two pieces off the board by, by making the whole chess base not work. Wow. It'll work in a second. Yeah, very good. Good job, chess base. Yeah. Okay. So if these pieces could magically leave the board, that would be very helpful for my pawns because the bishop is stopping all my pawns. This knight, as we say in India, is doing Vishwanathan. Vishwanathan. Right. So the knight's terrible on h2. This bishop is great. So he played knight e3. He said, take me. I dare you. I double dare you. Then he said, do they speak English in Greece? And the guy was like, what? Okay. Now, if black doesn't take the bishop, I, I like the knight on d5. If you watch my stream, you'll like the knight on f5. Right. And black's like, you, you can't put your knight there. I won my pawn back. I'm the best. Okay, so he equalized the material, but now these, whoa, that was the wrong button. But now these pawns have gotten stronger because there's one less defender here. So he says, I'm going to queen those pawns. Hooray for me. King f8, moving your king towards the situation. Bishop c7. He really wants to queen those pawns. Man, talk about queening his pawns. Now, if there was a bishop on d4, which there was, that wouldn't work. But now it works. Okay, rook, rook c3. Okay, now, here's why people get confused. <sighs> Mainly because of Donald Trump. But there's other reasons, too. So, here, white sacrifice to peace was the reasoning to get back his peace. As we say in Germany, Ish don't think so. The reason was he wants to make a queen. If you take the knight on c7, you're not making a queen. I take on c6, I take on c7, and we draw. Okay, now black wants to play rook takes c6. You agree. So white played. Rook takes d6. Rook takes d6. Doesn't care about the knight, he wants to make a queen. Now he'll take the knight next move, because they make a queen. Knight a6, rook check, rook a8. Man, the truth hurts. Now if he takes on c6 and he takes on a6, white has two passed pawns. Recommended by Magnus. Wow. King d6. b7. Man, the truth hurts. And he played, he played, he played. What do you play? Oh, king takes no, I'm pushing the button and there's no moves being played. He resigned. Okay, let's look at the let's look at the possible moves. Probably don't want to allow that. King. Probably you don't want to move it because then I queen. So you got rook c6, rook a3, and king c6, right? I king c6. King c6. I probably go there. Probably. I would still play king c6. Right, but probably I go there. Yeah, if I don't go there, then you play king c6. Yeah, that's probably a draw. I play king c6. After here, then you ain't gonna draw. But Harmon's like, why not? You see, I would take your rook, and yeah, then you're not going to draw. If I turn on the engine, it'll say plus like 8.7. I'm assuming. Got to say something. Man, yeah, I'm better than the engine. It takes it like 10 minutes to say 8.7. Terrible. That's two CPUs. Horrible. Okay. So that's no good. Okay. If you play rook c6, then I play rook a6. And then the truth hurts. Yeah. And then rook a3, I, I can, everything wins. I can't find one that doesn't win. I, I guess taking's the best. Okay, so he resigned after b7. So what's funny is this game sort of mimics uh, Magnus's, uh, all his past pawns. So having past pawns that are queening is good in the end game. Who would have thunk that? Yeah. All right. And somehow the higher rated players won every game. Oh, no, that's not true. In the second game, Navarro lost. Terrible. Okay. Then this game was played by Nidich and Gundemir Christensen. Okay. And uh, they got this position, and White played the obvious. King, King takes e3. Okay, now we're going to vote. It's Black's turn to move, because you know what White just did. Mm -hmm. Okay. This game was played two days ago. Azerbaijan versus Iceland. The truth hurts. I mean, for Iceland it does. Okay, so who thinks white has the advantage? 
Okay. Yeah. Who thinks black has the advantage? And who thinks it should be a draw? And the abstentions have it. What? I think it's Fortnite. Fortnite? Incorrect. So we got two white as the advantage, one Fortnite, and two abstentions. Good class. I'll say draw. Draw? Okay. White. Okay, white. So three for white, one a draw on you? And Fortnite? No, but what's your actual answer? Um, I'll say draw. Okay, so two draw and three white wins? Or was it the other way around? No, it's three draw. No, you said white, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, all five of you were right. Usually they're all wrong. Yeah. So this is a draw if both sides play correctly, but white won. Now, I gotta explain something that none of you will understand ever. Like when you die, you won't understand it, and you'll tell your kids the opposite. So, <sighs> people. <laughs> okay, let's say you play somebody, and the computer says all zeros the whole game. You both play perfect. And then you get to move 50, and it says all zeros. Then on move 51, you make a bad move, and it says your opponent's plus two. Then you lose. And then after the game, your friend says, how did you do? Okay, the correct answer, which nobody has ever given in their life, is I lost. That answer has never been given. How'd you do? I lost. I've never heard that. I've heard, how'd you do? Well, then they give me their life story. I woke up and Dunkin' Donuts was closed and Starbucks had a long line and I was tired and I was drawing the whole game. I played great and then in time trouble I blundered. Whenever there's a long story, I know they lost. <laughs> like, like well, I just want to know the result of the game so I can put it in the computer. Also, I'll ask a kid, how did you do? Good, and they walk away. <laughs> it doesn't mean they won. I did good. And I'm like, what? I'm trying to put the results in the computer. Okay, so you don't deserve to draw or win or lose. The, the result is what the result is. You deserve whatever the result was. Now in this position, if both sides play perfectly, it's a draw. Also on move one, if both sides play perfectly, it's a draw. But you still don't deserve to draw, you've gotta play the right moves. Now any grandmaster would take white because even though it's a draw, if somebody wins, it's gonna be white. If somebody wins, white's trying to win. If two supercomputers are playing, it's gonna be a draw. But if two humans are playing, sometimes it'll be a draw and sometimes white will win. This is one of the white wins. And whenever you have these equal end games where Magnus is winning, other high rated players also beat low rated players. They just don't get the credit because they don't beat each other. So if Nadish was playing a 2700, probably it would be a draw. But he's playing a 2420, which is lower than me. So that's not good. But this is a draw because white can't do anything until white could do something. Okay, and that happened very shortly. All right, king e5, moving the king up in the end game. Good. Knight c3, good. King e d6, good. And after rook g5, he, he blundered. And in fact, I don't understand. Oh, I understand. Yes. Now I'm 2700 because I cheated a little. To me, the most obvious move for white is. King d4, then if black plays knight e2 check and white plays king e3, that's not getting anywhere. You play king e4, the knight g3 check wins your rook. Now I understand rook g5. So for those of you who didn't follow that, which is all of you, check, and this wins your rook. So you want to move your king to d4, but you don't want to move your king back to e3 the next move. So you played rook g5. Okay, and now black made a very bad move. I don't want to say he's losing after this move, but probably. There's a really obvious move here that draws. He didn't play it. Let's see how good the class is. You! 9b1 and take the pawn on a3. That pawn cannot be defended. Right? I don't think so. If I turn the engine on, I think it says knight b1 and then all zeros. Yeah, knight b1 and then draw. Yeah. Also, it says like every move is a draw. Knight d5 check is a draw. Okay. It's really drawn when it says this draws, this draws, this draws. When it says only this draws, then everybody loses. Okay. Yeah. Now, white said, I, black said, white, black said, I have an idea. I'll play, I'll put my knight on the worst square. Knight I think it's the worst square. Knight two? Close. Knight back to a4. 
Ninety-two's also is maybe worse. Good job. Yeah. King D4. Ah, the computer's like, what are you doing? 984. Terrible. Exactly. I'm gonna start breaking. Okay. Remember I told you about eight hours ago how bad chess space was? See? You were like, how come the game's on like chess space no good? And then there you go. So here's what here's what chess space did. Let's say I send you games mm -hmm. in the email. Then you're like, oh, Ben sent me games. Then you open it up. So the, let's say the file's called, here's your games. You would think you're opening up the file, here's your games. But Chessbase says, well, I have an idea. I'll take your games, I'll put them in another database. And that already has games in it. What? And so when, this, when, 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 the, when the version of Chessbase did this, that did this, Alejandro Ramirez, who used to work for Chessbase, maybe he still does, I said, hey, what's happening? Like, why is it doing that? Am I doing something wrong? And he said, I told them not to do that. <laughs> yeah, he says, that's dumb. Yeah, and I'm like, why is it doing that? Like, I want the name of the database I sent, not put it in some other database, and now it's part of a bigger database. Like, what are you doing? I'm not sending you a king and pawn endings and put it in a database with, like, you know, with checkmates in the opening. I'm trying to send you something separate. Okay, so then Chessbase heard I was talking trash about it and just decided not to work. It's like, ha-ha. Okay. So king d4, rawr. Now black's not doing very well. Possibly if a supercomputer was black, it would draw. But now white's just better. That knight's no good. White's king is better than black's king, also etc. Probably black was like, I, you can't do anything, I, I'm fine. Which obviously isn't true. Because if I swing my rook around, I play rook takes knight, you resign. So I can do something. I got, I got, if I take your bishop, and take back, I have winning chances depending on where your king is. So I can do something. Okay, so he's threatening rook takes knight. Okay. Yeah. And now he followed the fine gold rule. Hooray for Ben. You. King C4. Well, then after knight check, you go back to D4, which is always repeats. So that's fine. Yay. Yeah. He played A4. When your opponent's pawn is on B5, you play A4. Okay, now the obvious tactical justification, <laughs> obvious, if you take it, you take on, B6. take on B6, and then white wins. Made in 21. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, it's always more than I think. 24? 24. 24. Nah, I'm, that's not close. 23 is close, not 21. Terrible. Okay. So that's not good because I said so, right? Yeah. Also, that's not good. Yeah. So yeah, A4, yay. And now, instead of white can't do anything, white's gonna have passed pawns. In every end game we looked at, having passed pawns was a good idea. Now you queen them. Yeah. Okay, so king B7, obviously. Takes, takes, and we got two connected passed pawns. The truth hurts. We went from zero pass pawns to two. Mm. Okay, and then white wins easily because two pass pawns, yeah, harsh. Mm -hmm. I like the way the bishop's on c4, defended by the pawn, we get rid of the pawn. Now the bishop's on b5, defended by the knight, we get rid of the knight. Probably you shouldn't have your bishop next to your opponent's king every move, maybe somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, but he was very concerned about, whoa, did it wrong? he was very concerned about c4. So he made sure white would never play c4. Like if the bishop was safe, then man, c4, b5, rawr. Yeah. And now, resigning is bad in the team tournament, so he played on. Terrible. And then he's like, all right, I resign. Damn. Yeah. Now it's got to be made in 17. Come on. You can do it. Come on. I just, I see, there you go. Yes. I got one right. Oh, it's 16. No, I was so close. <laughs> Man, I didn't see that one defense for black. I said 15. All right. Yeah, and then he resigned and white won. In all those end games, even though you didn't notice, even though I told you, one side moved their king out more than the opponent. That side won. One side pushed their past pawns more than the opponent. That side won. In the opening, don't do that. Don't move your king up unless you're playing an extra game with Archer. Yeah. 
you don't understand that joke. But on Saturday or Sunday, I don't know. It was Saturday. Saturday? Saturday or Sunday, there was a tournament here and somebody had a buy. And their rating was 100. So they played an extra rated game with Archer. And after about half an hour, I went to look at the game. And I looked and I couldn't find Archer's opponent's king. <laughs> now in a kids tournament, I just assume they're off the board. But I'm like, Archer's not going to allow that. I'm like, oh, there it is. It wasn't somewhere it should be. It was on the other side of the board. And all the pieces were on the board. I was like, why is the king over there? What square was it on? It was on B5. The white king was here and there were pieces everywhere. And I was like, wait, where? I wasn't looking there for the king. I was looking around here. I was like, well, where is the king? Yeah. And then Archer made his opponent very, very shortly. Very shortly. Very. Also, did your opponent castle then run their king over there? I mean, your opponent's king ran all the way over there. Anyway, that was good defense by your opponent. Right. So in the opening, middle game, and end game, things are different. That's why we have an end game lecture. In the end game, rooks are better than minor pieces. Yep. In the opening and middle game, eh. Morphe's like, here's my rook. I don't need that. I'm checkmating you in 20 moves. Well, that's, that's useless. Where's my bishops and knights at? Right, which is true. And... In the end game, then you want your rook. Much better than a knight, much better than a bishop. In this instance, the rook beat the bishop at knight with the use of a couple of pawns. In the opening, I wouldn't do that. In the opening, I'm taking bishops and knights. But in the end game, rooks are better than minor pieces. Promote your pass pawns and move your king up the board. And then, like these guys, you'll be 2,700. No? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And then we'll see tomorrow... If Magnus, the highest rated player in the world for seven years, can win with white against the guy who's never lost, what's the result going to be? Draw. 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 And the guy hasn't lost in a year and a half over 80 plus games. He's still number four in the world. Tough world. I thought the answer was always first. That could be. Who's the number three player in the world? Bob Man, look at that. Yeah. I, was, I had a hint already. I had a real easy hint. You know what my hint was? Do mama. No. I don't know. That's a good hint, too. I, be, I beat him last year. Oh, yeah. That, that's a good hint. Because I didn't beat anybody in the top 100, so that's the only guy. Yeah. That's your only hope. Yeah. Yeah. Confusing the audience. All right. And as uh, what's his name said to his class? Class is dismissed. Correct. Well done. Yeah. Go Magnus, but mainly go Fabi. Right? Yeah. America. They're, they're, they're playing soon. Let's play each other. Where are they playing? What city? Oh, London. New York. No, London. Oh. No, New York was the last one. Oh. Yeah.